and welcome to a new no code tutorial for no code hq and in today's tutorial i'm going to show you how to give your users the option to translate um, your page or your web app in, in general uh, within your bubble application so basically what we'll do we'll create um, a drop down in the header um, for german and english where users can simply um, select the language they want um, in the drop down and the application will be translated accordingly and we'll do that without using any external tools at all, uh, which means you will have to write the translations yourself, obviously. And what is also important to note is um, a user is not, it's not necessary that a user is logged in um, for this to work. So we will use uh, cookies for that uh, with the built-in bubble functionality to save the preference, the language preference of the user. But let me just uh, jump right into the um, building process and uh, this will make things uh, much clearer. So what I did here, I created a new bubble application and as always this bubble boilerplate is opened and the application system, I'm just going to start with a blank page and I'm close to assistant. Okay. And what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to build a simple landing page. All right. Um, with not a, that much text because I don't want to waste time translating too much stuff. Um, but let me just jump right into that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a title here. Um, um, I don't know, let's say, the title of your applications is buy cheap houses. All right. So that's the title, the landing page here and the heading. All right. Let's just center that. That's buy cheap houses. And then, um, I don't know, is, um, let's have another text here and this should be subheading. Are you, are you interested in buying a house? Sign up now to this application to learn more all right um and then let's just have a video as an example okay um and um or actually let's not have a video let's have an icon or what else can we do let's have a button yeah let's have a button here which just says um sign me up okay Great. Um, I'm just going to center that here. And to be honest, I'm not going to add anything more to this page. Why? Because that's not the goal of this tutorial. Uh, I want to show you how to build in the functionality. Obviously, your page would have more text or images or whatever, um, but I, I don't want to translate too much text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right over to our data tab. Okay. And as always, we have the custom data type called user, which is always created and has the email field and the password field as well, which is not visible here, but so an email and a password and these other fields here. So um, the basic uh, the basic way to uh, implement um, a user preference, um, let's say it's a dark mode or in our case, it's a preferred language, is just to create a field for this user, okay? In this case, I'm gonna create a new field and I'm gonna call this, of, or it's gonna be of type text and the field name is going to be called preferred language. Okay. And let's say um, on default, the preferred language is always English. Okay. However, it could also be German. It could be Spanish and so on and so forth. Okay. Now you're probably asking yourself, okay, great. Um, but a user has to be logged in in order to um, change this field here. Um, no, that's not entirely correct because Bubble does something really great. If a user isn't logged in, um, you can still change a field for the current user. And in this case, the, the database entry won't be changed, but what will be done, Bubble will, or your Bubble application will create a cookie for the current user and apply the value of whatever you change it to, to the cookie for the user. So what does that mean? Let's say user A from, um, I don't know, from New York visits your bubble page and he doesn't sign up. But let's say he changes his default language from English to Spanish. Okay. And we're going to do that in a second. But then what should happen is there will be a cookie created for this user. Okay. According to his device, obviously. So let's say his MacBook that his preferred language is Spanish. Okay. Now he can close the application and next time he's going to open it. Okay. Um, according to the preference that is set, according to the cookie that we created, his default language will still be saved and the web page will be shown in, in Spanish this time. Okay. And 
when the user signs up, the cookie will be automatically translated into the database entry. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, I tried to explain as easy as possible. Um, but if you didn't, didn't, didn't understand it, don't worry. Just follow what I do now and you should be good to go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to create the translations themselves. So how we're going to do that? Simply by using conditional. So I'm going to go here to buy cheap houses. I'm going to say, okay, all right, let's add a condition. When the current user's preferred language is German. Okay, then I want to have a text. Um, I'm going to write it in German now. Uh, kaufen Sie billige Häuser. Okay, um, I'm just going to copy this condition here. Same for here. I'm going to paste the condition. I'm going to say the text is not going to be, are you interested? Um, sind Sie interessiert? Dann melden Sie sich jetzt bei dieser App an. Something like that. Okay. And at last for the button as well, I'm going to add a condition here again uh, with a text and it's going to be uh, registrieren, which is sign me up in German. Okay. And obviously you could add multiple conditionals. Um, for various different languages. All right. So that's already it regarding our um, our translations themselves. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add a header here, basically. Okay. So let's add a header. Um, I'm not going to use a reusable element just just for demoing purposes. It doesn't matter here. But I'm just going to add a group, and this is going to be our header. Okay. So I'm going to call this here um, header. All right. Let's give this some design. So maybe let's give it like a small shadow. All right, so we can see it's the header and then we just have an icon here. Um, I don't know, let's keep it simple. Like a house. Oops, we have a house here and this is going to be the logo of our company, whatever it is. Um, you can obviously add links now, whatever. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add a drop down here to the bottom uh, top right. OK, I'm going to center that vertically and this drop down will have a placeholder which is select your or select language just let's keep it simple select language okay and what we want to do we want to enable auto binding on parent elements thing okay however the parent element does not have a type of content so what we're going to do we are gonna go here to the header we're going to set the type of content to user and the data source should be the current user now we can enable this and we can set the field to modify through preferred language. Okay. And for choices, we're going to say we have English and we have German. Okay. And oops, and we want to say <clears throat> this input should not be empty. So let's recap. Now we have two choices here in the set in the moment that the user changes his preferred language. The value will be auto binded to the parent elements thing, which in this case is the current user and the field that will be modified is the preferred language. We're getting a warning here now, which says you want to modify this thing, blah, blah, blah. We don't have any privacy rules. So let's create a privacy rule. OK, so let's create a new role here under data privacy for a user. Let's define a new role, which is um, not or let's just call it um, default. OK, let's really keep it simple and we're going to say um, when the current user is this user, okay, he should be allowed to do auto binding on the preferred language. Okay. You're probably asking, what does this mean? It's just to check, are you, are you the user right now? And if that's the case, you should be allowed to do auto binding again, a bit confusing maybe, but um, just do it like this and you should be good to go. Okay. And now also the, the error message um, is, is gone. Okay. What you can do next, you can, Add an alert here, um, maybe um, to the position it at the top and say uh, changes saved. OK, and you can say, OK, all right, for a drop down, I want to show an alert on success and the alert to show should be changes saved. OK, now let's take a look at the application and see if it works. We should be uh, good to go now. So let's preview that. OK. And our application is loading up. All right. So we have our nice header here. We have the title buy cheap houses. Are you interested in buying a house? Sign up now to this application to learn more. Okay. Now let's take a look at what happens if we change this value here. Okay. Um, I'm going to change it to German now. And what should happen now is quite straightforward. All this text you should change to German. Okay. 
it did. Okay, and the changes were saved. So now it's kaufen sie billige Häuser. Sind sie interessiert? So all the text is German now. I can change that back to English and it's English. Okay. Um, nothing too spectacular, but now let's let's actually see um, the main goal of what we did here. So I'm going to change it back to German and we're going to close the tab now. Okay. And you might remember in our data tab, we set the default language to English or the preferred language, the default language to English. So I'm going to close this tab now here. And what should happen is that if we open it again, the default language should be English, right? No, because we auto bind this value to the current user, even though I'm not logged in, a cookie was created. Okay, so I'm going to close this tab. I'm going to, I'm going to hit preview again. So let's see what happens now. Awesome. As you can see, the application remembered that we just visited it by creating a cookie. The value of our preferred language field was set to German. Again, that was saved as a cookie. And now it's automatically applied here and our application is in German. Um, and yeah, it's, it, it worked perfectly. Okay. So that's a great way to um, basically use cookies and to offer users a better user experience by saving what their preference was for a language. Okay. Um, obviously, if you have signed up users, I'm not going to show you that. That's quite straightforward. Um, you wouldn't change anything because instead of saving these values as a cookie for the current user, you would just save that uh, as a database entry. But again, the functionality would be no different. It would be um, exactly, exactly the same. And yes, that's basically it, to be honest. Um, a really simple way to add translations or give users the ability to change the language of the application. Uh, and save that um, as a cookie even without a user having to sign up. Um, the only disadvantage I would say to this method is you have to uh, manually translate every piece of text by using conditionals and that can get very, um, very tedious. Um, but again, it depends on what kind of application you're building. And of course you save money instead of using a, a translation tool or even something like Google Translate, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, but yeah, it's up, up to you obviously, but the functionality itself can be applied to various different things. Again, uh, things like dark mode um, or all kinds of things that a user can set to have his preferred, let's say pre to, to modify his preferred view of the web page. Okay, so it can also be a theme maybe or whatever. Um, and you could use the same functionality for that. So yeah, um, that's basically it. Uh, I hope you learned something and I'm gonna see you guys for next tutorial of NoCoHQ. Bye.